the classic thing that happens to me is I sit, I get an email from someone and say, my child has autism, what can I do? It won't be, hello, how are you going? Or I've heard about you or anything. Else. It'll be something quite blunt. And then I ask them to send me data so that I can see why. I'm assuming the B12 deficient, but you need to establish it. The first thing I'll ask for is a note, an organic acids test, and that tells me whether they're B12 deficient. It tells me whether they're B2 deficient. It also tells me whether they're iron deficient, and it has an indication of vitamin D deficiency in it as well. There are quite a few markers that I use. The other thing is, because I know of the connection with iodine and selenium molybdenum for B2, I normally ask for a hair metals test analysis. Because there's an odd belief that autism is caused by mercury, they always get their hair tested. And one of the things they totally disregard is the essential metals normally. And when you do that, you find that all the kids are deficient in one of iodine, selenium and or molybdenum. So that comes up in the test. So I can see that. So then I've got a, a way of saying to the parents, well, you need to fix this deficiency first in iodine, selenium and or molybdenum so that you can have functional B2. Because if you try to address the B12 deficiency without that, it doesn't work. The other test that's useful is the TSH. T4 and T3, so they're measures of, of thyroid activity. So I can see whether they're looking hypothyroidic or not. And it doesn't take much deficiency of selenium and iodine to be hypothyroidic, functionally hypothyroidic. So this is often missed because the ranges are set too high. But there's a few papers that are coming around to where I am, and that is that it basically if your TSH is above 1.5, you're starting to be hypothyroidic. And the more you are above it, the more you are. I have some of the kids who've got TSH levels of 8 or 12. So they're pretty massive. But basically, if you don't get it down to under 1.5, they still show deficiency in B2. And if their genetics is not optimal, that has a more profound effect. When you replete, so let's say you've got a swimming pool full of iodine, selenium, and molybdenum. When you replete, you can take quite a bit out and it doesn't seem to affect function. But when you're trying to fill the pool up from being very low, it doesn't need much to take out before you really affect the function. That's one of the things I've found. So you need about 150 micrograms a day and I think there's 25 milligrams of iodine in a replete person. So you can see there's quite a bit to get up to. And some of the kids are incredibly low in iodine. I, I really don't understand how they can have a diet that's so low and they will just get a tiny drop of the iodine and that really affects them strongly so they've obviously been very deficient